Hello everyone, my name is Mikhail and I'm a UI engineer at Coherent Labs. In this tutorial series, we will be creating different UI components for a racing game. We will be using a simple racing game made in Unreal Engine 5 along with Coherent Game Face, which is our product, to create the interface. Coherent Game Face is a middle game middleware that allows you to create beautiful interfaces using web technologies. In these tutorials, I'll show the front-end side of the development and I'll demonstrate different front-end principles, tips and tricks and best practices to create the most optimal user interface. I'll also be showing different game phase specific features and last but not least, I'll show you how to profile your interface so that it will perform at its most optimal. Now, one thing that you will notice during our tutorials is that the code that I'll be writing may differ in some ways to what you be used to in modern web development. And the reason is that game phase only supports a subset of the web standard. This is because not everything in the web standard is actually necessary for creating a game UI so we decided to optimize our product. This is part one of our racing interface tutorials and here we'll be creating a counter with a progress bar similar to the Gran Turismo games. For this tutorial series we'll be using plain HTML with CSS and vanilla JavaScript to create our interface. Game Face supports different JavaScript frameworks such as React, React or Vue and depending on your project, your needs, you can adopt a different approach to creating your UI. And now let's jump right into our code. The first thing here you might notice is the use of this cohtml.js file. Cohtml is our source C++ library that runs our product. And we have created this JavaScript library, cohtml.js to expose some of its APIs and allow us to communicate between the game and our interface. So the first thing we'll start with is we'll create a counter container element. In this counter container will house our counter content, which is with the counter itself with the number and our splitting text, which is the start text you see at the end of the animation. Now, in our counter content, we'll create first our counter, which will be an inline SVG. We're using an SVG so that we are able to create uh, something like a progress bar here. And to create, we also add a counter number, which will be just the number that you see changing. Now, in our counter SVG, we need to make a path for our circle progress bar. And the reason that we'll be making a path is that it's the, the only element that currently supports stroke dash offset and stroke dash array, which will be needed to create the desired effect. So for our pet, let's say we want a stroke that is white. Let's set the stroke width to 5, maybe 8, let's say 8, and set the field to none. That way our circle won't have any fill. Now, to create the ellipse, we can just Google ellipse to path and open this website. The link to it will be in the description of this tutorial as well. So, here we need to set our ellipse properties and let's say we want it to be 300 by 300, so the center will be 150 by 150 and the radius will be 150 as well. Once we generate our path, We'll copy it and paste it in our D attribute that we've set. 
Now we need to set the width and the height of our counter, which as we just mentioned will be 300 by 300 pixels. And let's set the view box. Now the view box will be minus eight by minus eight and the width and height of it will be 216 and 360. This is so we can account for the stroke width here. So now we can open our HTML page inside the player. The player is a app that is a, the player is a standalone app that we've created in order to preview HTML pages in a game-like environment and this is super useful for when you don't have the game accessible or when you want to have the front end and the back end to work separately. So we can load our file and we can see the circle now, which is great. However, our circle isn't in the center, so let's add some styling to it. Now, first we need to set our body width and height and to we'll just set them to 100 VW and 100 VH so that it's responsive and let's set the margin to zero and our counter content container which will which holds everything mm, let's say we need to have its position absolute and let's say the top to 50% the left to 50% again and we can transform it using minus 50 and minus 50% to center it Now if you open up player and refresh, you can see it's in the center. Now we may notice that when we resize the player, the circle doesn't resize. And this is because we've set it to 300-300 pixel. So we're going to delete that and let's say the counter, which is our SVG element, we have a width of 20, 20 VH and the height of let's say 20 VH as well. So now we see the circle is smaller, but when we expand or shrink our player, we can see that it changes its size appropriately. Now next will be to set the progress animation. So for this reason, let's add a class to our path and we can call it counter animation. And in our CSS, we can add counter animation. And for our counter animation, again, we will set position absolute. And let's say the stroke dash array dash offset actually will be a thousand and the stroke dash array will be a thousand as well. Now these numbers are probably higher than what we need but for this animation it's not really necessary to get into the details of how much. And now if we create a, we can create our animation which let's just call it counter and we will add to be from stroke dash offset of thousand to stroke dash offset of zero and add our animation to our element let's say, let's say the, the forward so when it's over it will stay okay but now we see that the animation is going backwards so to change that we we'll just simply reverse the zero and the thousand great but we can also see that it's not starting from the 
top center. So now something we may notice is that our animation starts from the left center instead of the top center. So to change that we simply need to add a transform to our counter and we rotate it 90, minus 90 degrees which is not the correct so it should be 90 degrees great perfect now next we want to add the stroked background to our progress animation and we can simply do that by clone, cloning our pet element and let's call it counter dashed now counter dashed we will just have a stroke dash array we have a position absolute first and then a stroke dash array of let's say 10 by uh, let's call it 10 for now and see how it goes it, it looks good but i want the dashes to be a little bit smaller so let's make the dashes 4 and the gap between them 10 okay this is better so now that we have our progress bar let's out our number and we'll simply add the number 3 in our counter number and we we'll add the styling for it so let's add the font size first no first we should set the position to be absolute because otherwise it won't be positioned correctly and we also need to set our counter content to center every all of its children we'll just use display flex using align items center and justify content center now now we can add the font size and let's say it should be 4rm this is so that our font is also relative to the viewport and to be and then we'll add the color white now let's change the font from the default coHTML font to another one that we have added locally so to add a new font we'll add the add font face decoration and for font family we call it contracts and pass the path to it our font and all of our other assets are inside the assets folder now if we save and let's add font family and we just need to use the one we declared above contracts so if we refresh now in our player we can see the font changing so perfect and the last thing we have to do is to add our splitting text to do that let's create two and call them splitting top and splitting bottom this way we have the left and the right part the two split so if we create counter splitting text we can set the width let's call it 50 vh and the height to be for example 20 vh and the background image should be the one we have in our assets folder 
which is just called start PNG. We also need to set the background position to be centered, set the background size to be contained, and something else that is important is set the background repeat to no repeat, since it's repeat by default in CoHTML. And as with everything else, we need to set the position to be absolute. Now if we load, we'll see it centered, but it's centered by the left part. So again, let's center everything in the con container. And now we have our text in the middle. Now we can add the different parts. So for the top part, let's create the clip path. That will be a polygon. And it will start in the top left, go to the top right, go to the bottom left. So this should be zero and 100. And let's end it there. It will be like a triangle cutout. And for our splitting bottom part, we'll do again the same, but this time it will be the top right, which is 0, the bottom right, and again the bottom left. So now let's create animations for both parts and we call it split left and it will have a transform translate y x from zero and a opacity of one uh, which and we'll change it to transform translate x of minus hundred percent and opacity of zero and we can do the same for the split right which will just have a translate x from 0 to 100% and we can add these animations to our different parts now if we open in our browser in a player we will see how the text splits in the middle great so we're done with all the styling and the HTML and we can start on creating our JavaScript. So you can see the engine object here, which is availab available only in CoHTML. And this is the object that houses all of our API related functions. So for the first one we'll start is when ready, which returns a promise when the backend is ready and inside this then we are able to communicate with our backend so one of the first things we show you is we'll create a, an event a listener that so that when the backend sends an event we can run a callback function and we'll call this function counter time and you can pass parameters as well. So in this case, it will be the number that will go for our counter. Now, when we start, we want to make sure that our counter is actually hidden. So we will go to our style and get a counter container and change the display from flex to none and now when our page is loaded our counter won't be shown so now next we have to get our counter in the javascript 
So we'll just create a constant that's called counter content container and we'll just use the document query selector and select the counter container. Now in our counter time function we can get the counter container and set its style display to be flex again. So it will be shown whenever we fire this event. And we also need to get our counter number that will change with the number that we get from our event. So we can set the counter number in our HTML to number. So now whenever we pass an event, we can change the number. Now, to test our code, we can use a set timeout of, let's say, one second and get and use the engine trigger function which can trigger an event from the JavaScript. So yeah, let's put it to five. And now if we load, wait one second and it shows with five. So everything works correctly. We can also create a few set timeouts so we can test if calling the event right after each other will change our number and it changes but as you can see it doesn't really trigger our HTML our CSS animation again so let's get our counter animation which will be just the path element that we have And let's say counter animation, get animations. So we're using the web API, web animation APIs. We'll get the animation and let's set the current time to zero. And this will restart our animation whenever the event starts. It's called. So now we can see when it's called four, the animation runs again. Now, next thing that we should do is whenever we reach zero we should remove we should show then the splitting text not in the beginning so we'll set it to display none again and let's put an if that if the number is zero and we can set we can set our splitting text to Let's combine them actually into one container because we can then attach an event listener to wait for its animation to end in order to hide everything. So let's call it splitting container and to get, uh, let's get it. So now we can add the, oh yeah, first we need to change the be from the text to the container so now we can set splitting container style display but not none block so it, be sh it <coughs> so it will be shown and now if press to from two to one and let's add uh, zero If you run it in our player, we can see two, one, and zero, and the start will appear. But now, since we added the new container, our splitting text isn't centered. So we we'll need to center that. And let's say a position absolute, since everything is absolutely positioned. And try again it's not positioned correctly uh, okay so 
let's just move our text to the center or no um, just a second yeah let's set the width to be 50vh and the height to be 20vh and let's say the position to be absolute again okay so now that we can now we can add the width and the height of the text to be a hundred percent and if we change that it will be positioned in the center again okay but as you can see the zero doesn't disappear so we need to get our counter content which is the counter and the number and set its display to none yeah we need we need to actually declare it first And now we can add counter content. Style display none. Okay. And if we try it again, okay. And now we can add to our splitting container let's add an event listener this event listener should listen for the animation end event so that when the splitting animation ends we can hide the whole counter container yeah let's remove the engine listening to our function and remove the event listener uh, yeah we didn't set the function so this is not going to work yeah let's just leave it like that so it's two one and start great now let's remove our mock data and head on to our game so for our game we have a few cards that just follow a path and we've already set it up so that whenever the game starts it will count down from 3 to 0 and the countdown will start when the ready for bindings is added. So in the countdown we have a delay that is 1 second and this after this delay let's trigger our event now to trigger our event we first need to get our game face hut which is what has what has all the game face blueprints so first we need to create the event so we'll use create.js event from our game face hood now we need to add a parameter to our event game face event support of four parameters that you can so let's set an integer which will be our countdown And then now that we have the event along with the parameter, we can call trigger JS event. Which will trigger our JS event using the event we've just created. And we need to call our JS event counter time the same as we did in our JavaScript so that it knows to listen for it. 
and through the event data we add the created event. So now if we save and compile and run our game, we see 3, 2, 1 and start. However, we can also see there's an error that flashed in our console. So to check our console for errors, you can go to the output log and you can see log game phase, where we show the errors created from game phase. And here it says cannot set properties of undefined setting current time. So this means that wherever we get the animation current time and set it, it's not it's undefined. The reason is that at number zero it's already hidden. So we just need to add a return and it will stop the execution there. And here it is with no errors. All right, everyone, this is all for this tutorial. In the next one, we'll be showing you how to create a gauge with all the car stats, such as speed, gears, and engine rotations per minute. If you like this video or this tutorial series, please leave a like at the video and if you have some feedback or ideas for future tutorials, leave us a comment. And if you want to see more of our tutorials, you can subscribe to our channel. Thank you and have a great day.